afternoon, we are Group 1 and we are here to present lymphatic filariasis. For the introduction, lymphatic filariasis is also known as elephantiasis or tibak as what most provinces in the Philippines call it. It is a mosquito-borne parasitic disease where the, mos the disease is transferred from one person to another through the blood which the mosquito gets from one person and is transferred to another. Uh, the main cause of this disease is um, the enlargement of limbs and genitals, and it also causes social and psychological consequences. Um, lymphatic filariasis goes back um, as much as 90 years ago in the Philippines. It was discovered in 1907, and it was um, discovered by foreign workers. And because of this, in 1960, the government made a National Filariasis Control Program, and it consists of programs such as mass treatments and um, prevention programs that allows the uh, that allows the possibility for this disease to decrease in the Philippines. And in 2006, there was an executive order which declared November as Filariasis Mass Treatment. So these are some of the examples of what could happen to a person's limbs if they contract this disease. So as you can see, um, the part of the body which is infected is actually enlarged, which um, this is why it was named as elephantiasis because of, as you can see, the, the legs are enlarged like an elephant. So in this infographic, the red parts of the world are actually those countries that are that are infected by uh, lymphatic filariasis. And as you can see, the Philippines, which is uh, a color of dark red, is actually, which this means that it is an endemic country. And it also means that there are already ongoing interventions being done in these countries that would help prevent the spread of the disease. In this national view, the colored portions of the Philippines are those um, parts of the country that are actually deeply affected by the disease. So most of them are, are most of the, the uh, infected areas or provinces are located in Visayas and Mindanao, mostly at the south. Um, now for the elaboration of the issue, we will be discussing first the prevalence of this disease, lymphatic filariasis, uh, worldwide and in the Philippines. Second, the uh, causes and symptoms of the said disease. And third, the social perception, social perception of people with regards to the disease. So first, prevalence of the disease worldwide. So it is said that 80% of the infected people are living, living in the following countries. So first, we have Bangladesh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Ethiopia, India, Indonesia, Myanmar, Nigeria, Nepal, Philippines, and United Republic of Tanzania. So as you can see, most of these countries are tropical countries, and one of them is the Philippines. Next. So now, with the, uh, let us discuss the prevalence of disease specifically in the Philippines. So according to Section 1063, uh, as introduced by Senator Lito Lapid, um, there are 79 provinces of, in the Philippines, and 39 have a poverty incidence higher than the national average. Of these 39 provinces, 30 are endemic for lymphatic filariasis. So with this, we can infer that um, the most, uh, pro most, most of the provinces that are um, endemic are those that are uh, below the poverty line. Um, now let us discuss the causes and symptoms of the said disease, lymphatic filariasis. So there are three filaroid nematodes that infiltrate the lymphatic system, which cause, uh, which may cause uh, the lymphatic filariasis. So first we have the Wuchteria macrotti, second, Rugaria malai, and third, Rugaria timori. So um, it is Wuchteria macrotti. It is the most, uh, it is the filaroid nematode or worm that is most common in this disease. Uh, next, uh, elephantiasis has a has an asymptomatic infection. This means that um, 
the carrier of the disease does not uh, manis manifestate any um, symptoms during the during the acquisition stage. Para, uh, a child can uh, acquire such disease and then after six to seven years, um, he gets to um, manifest the enlargement of certain body parts. So third enlargement of the body part. So this may lead to tissue swelling or lympho and edema, uh, skin or tissue thickening of the limbs or elephantiasis, and scrotal swelling or hydrocele. So now, the social perception of the disease. So like what uh, I've discussed earlier, um, the disease is prevalent in rural areas where there are um, the rural areas where there are low income group of people. So um, with this, they lack awareness among the infected people. Um, they have no access to accurate information about the disease. And um, it is uh, lymphatic filariasis is also deemed one of the most neglected tropical disease since um, the disease is not does not bring instant death. So the government does not um, focus on it that much. Com unlike those diseases like AIDS and others. others. So in order to address this issue, these are some efforts by the DOH. Uh, the National Filariasis Elimination Program is the first effort to uh, address the lymphatic filariasis issue. So it started in 1998. Um, the World Health Assembly in 1997 declared filariasis elimination as a priority since they saw how disturbing the, the disease was already. And then this was followed by the World Health Organization's call for global elimination. And then um, as a sign of the Philippine government, the um, to commit to this um, advocacy, um, the administrative order number 25A was approved in 1998 and then a mass annual treatment with a combination drug of diethyl carbamazine citrate and aldendazole was distributed among the different provinces um, that was affected by lymphatic filariasis. Uh, the World Health Organization gave the government a free supply of aldendazole from GSK. And then this one, Fariasis Control Program, was a, was a more um, recent effort by the government. Um, the president during this time submitted the, an executive order to support the administrative order in order to support the ongoing efforts and their elimination target for lymphatic filariasis is the year 2016 which is um, two years from now. Okay, so our call to action um, so to raise awareness, to spread the information as a way to prevent people from contracting disease through social media posters and brochures. So uh, as what we will discuss later, um, we have created posters and brochures. Uh, we have created them in a Filipino language so that uh, it will better cater to uh, our target um, viewers. And then the social media. So everyone, all from the different social classes, have access already to social media. That is why we think that aside from print ads, um, social media would also be a good way of raising awareness. Second is avoiding breeding of mosquitoes. So um, in line with the gover what the government is already doing with um, raising people's awareness in clearing stagnant water, um, using mosquito repellents, and using mosquito nets. So we would like to just support that and add to their effort of um, reminding the people to um, clear stagnant water like whenever there are stagnant water beside the house to is to clean that in order to prevent mosquitoes from breeding. And then another is an annual treatment of communities to reduce the level of microfilaria 
the worms in the blood um, to, en and to enlist the help of NGOs and DOH. So part of our effort is to partner with whatever existing effort there is and actually um, help them in raising awareness and um, proposing solutions that the, that the um, affected people would better understand. So,